I want to introduce uh, Girish Mathurbutam, who's our CEO and co-founder right here in the audience. Can you please give him a round of applause? Thank you, David. Good morning, everyone. So while I was sitting there, I was thinking, hey, why are we having so many glitches, right? But then I realized both you and me have a career because of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a good thing. So what will happen if there are no problems, right? There's, there's no need for customer care or tech support. <clears throat> so, so my name is Girish Matrabhutam, and uh, I'm employee number one at Freshworks. <clears throat> and um, I'm glad to see... I feel good today to be standing in front of you in New York because I'll be honest, eight years ago when we started Freshworks as Freshdesk, not even in my wildest dreams, I would have imagined that we would become a company that's been so successful and, and sitting in uh, or standing in front of an audience like this in New York. So really, really feel proud and happy and humbled uh, to be here today. So I really uh, want to share that thought with you. And this is our first ever user conference. So, and you can probably see that or, or tell that by now that uh, <laughs> this is the first time we're doing a user conference. But, but like all things, we will learn and we'll get better. So what I wanted to also tell you or share with you um, with a lot of happiness is uh, recently we reached or announced to the world that we have crossed $100 million of ARR. So, but what we didn't realize was, while doing that, like after we reached, we actually figured out that we were among the uh, fastest companies, the top five uh, fastest companies to do so. And I would really like to say it was all possible because of you. So thank you uh, for. <laughs> so, so thank you for trusting in us when we were uh, a startup and uh, growing with us and, and really helping us uh, get to this scale. Okay, after the thank you slide, the presentation's over, right? <laughs> so just kidding. So today I want to talk to you about uh, three things. So the first, we're talking about the future of customer engagement. So I want to share with you where we see this industry uh, going. Like what is the future of uh, how our world is going to change? And I'm going to talk about uh, the concept of customer 360. I'm going to talk about collaboration in the context of our world, support, sales, customer engagement. And I'm going to talk about something that is probably on top of all of our minds, which is AI, uh, AI and ML, and how it's going to impact uh, the future of our work. So let's talk about customer 360 for a minute. So this has always been the holy grail of CRM, right? And uh, many companies have talked about having this full context of the customer, having a 360-degree view of the customer, but it's all been marketing, right? Nobody has actually ever delivered on that promise. No company actually can say that, I know everything about my customer. I have the tools and process that allow me to access that kind of information. So what I want to do now is I want to take you all uh, back in time. So many of you are young here, but some of you who are old like me, probably if you think about, uh, go back 11, 12 years, 2005, 2006, we remember some of these products, right? Um, we've used this fancy flip phone. I miss my Motorola flip phone, uh, or the TomTom -Tom or the Garmin GPS, or a, an MP3 player or a Canon uh, point and shoot camera. So do you remember these? Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. As consumers, we all believed that we needed all these products, right? Of course, I have to make phone calls, I have to listen to music, I have to go from A to B, and we actually believed that we needed to buy all these products, and, we, and also in each one of these categories, we had established leaders, like we had different companies who were leading each one of these categories. Now, these companies, we're very busy focusing on 
how to make their own product better. So every year you would have a new GPS with uh, more resolution screen, bigger screen, or a, a better camera with higher uh, megapixel resolution. So they were all focusing on how can I make my product better for the user, right? Now, nobody focused on what was the problem for a user who's using more than one product. Think about it. So let's, let's think about taking a picture in your camera and sharing it with the person next to you, right? Or, or sending it uh, to the person whom you know. And it, this is not uh, so long ago, like 10 years ago, we had to take the SD card out of the camera, insert it into the laptop, download the images, zip it, email it, and say, hey, here are my uh, tour pics. And then uh, I see that and then reply by email saying, cool pics. Right? So, yeah, we, we, we used to do that, and it's all technology. We're not talking about film camera, we're talking about technology. Now, and then we all know what happened. Then this happened. So the iPhone created a new category by combining multiple existing categories, and in that process, what it did was, it was solving the problem in a better way by focusing on the user who's using all these products. No company was able to see that. They were all focused on their own product, right? And there is a reason why I'm bringing this today. Now think about this in our own world. So what are we doing uh, today? And I'm talking to you as the CEO of Freshworks, who's selling you all this stuff, right? <laughs> so, so we have a, a sales team thinks we need to buy a CRM. A support team thinks we need to buy a help desk software, like Freshdesk. And you have a marketing team which is buying marketing automation software. And we have, uh, like, if you want to chat with customers on the website, you use chat, and, and so on. Now, at the end of it, when you look at it from a business point of view, all that the business is trying to do is have conversations with customers. But technology has evolved over the years, so we ended up buying all these different tools. And also, today, the problem that most of you in the room are actually having is, like, your data, your customer data, is actually in different apps, including Freshworks, right? So you have uh, data in different silos, like, like the iPhone data sharing example. Let's just think about that. So we are, you are engaging, how many of you are engaging, like, or at least worked with a lot of consultants to kind of stitch these things together, sign SOW, pay $100,000, and, and try to integrate all of this I'm sure you had a great experience with that, right? <laughs> so, so this is the state of our industry today. So this is where most of us are struggling with data being uh, present in different systems. And this is what we believe is going to change in the future. This is where smart companies are going to go. Like, so this is our vision of where this is moving. So what the question I want to put in your mind is, what if there is an iPhone moment in business software? Can a company think about the users or the business that's using more than one product and attempt to not do marketing talk about customer 360 or uh, uh, integrated full context view of the customer, but really create a product experience? So I'm not saying we have it yet, right? But I'm saying what if a company can really create the product experience that the iPhone brought in to change this problem of having us, uh, data stuck in different silos. So that is what is our vision. So when we started, we started Fresh Desk. We started with Fresh Desk, which probably uh, most of you here are using. So by focusing on the end user of support, then we went into like Fresh Service, or Fresh Sales, Fresh Marketer. So we made sure, because the, as the industry is not yet uh, fully ready, so industry is still looking at buying these tools. So the support manager today is not thinking about how can, how can I get customer 360. We have to play to the market. So we created those products with the end users of those products in mind. But while we were building it, our vision was to really build an integrated platform which will work out of the box. So you see today we have uh, eight products, starting with Fresh Desk and the Fresh Service. Fresh uh, sales, fresh marketer, chat, uh, caller, uh, and fresh connect, which is a collaboration which I'll talk to you about uh, in more detail. So the way we were able to do it is by actually building out everything as a platform and reusing these components so that 
we can make this work out of the box. The biggest benefit for customers would be you don't have to really spend the time and the effort in terms of trying to make everything work together or integrating it. And what we are working on now is to really create this integrated view for you, which we call internally as the Freshworks uh, 360 master customer record. So conceptually, I just want to describe what that means to you. So imagine, as a business, you are starting by marketing to your users, right? And then you're reaching out to them uh, in trade shows or uh, through email campaigns, and some of those uh, prospects become uh, leads. Your salespeople are talking to them. The leads are coming onto your website. They're checking out your website. They're checking out your products. And then they become customers. And then they interact with you. You have, uh, they need help or they have problems which you support them with. And then once you have them as customers, you want to keep them for life. You want to turn them into advocates and you still keep having conversations with them. So our approach with the Freshworks Master 360, uh, Freshworks 360 Master Customer Record is to help you capture all the events and all the conversations that your business or your teams are having with your customers into one central record. So this is what we believe uh, is going to be the better product solution rather than, try so I don't know, two uh, weeks ago, some of you might have noticed uh, at Dreamforce, Salesforce actually announced that they're going to use their MuleSoft uh, integration to try and construct a view, and it's going to be available next year, where they're going to try to stitch together a customer 360 view with uh, sales and marketing and service cloud data all coming together. And that means you have to spend more money on like uh, consultants to come and integrate it. So Salesforce is a great company. I have great respect for them. But what we are talking about is the product experience and the model of how things should work out of the box. And that's our approach. So we are taking a fundamentally different approach to the architecture of how we are building or constructing this master uh, customer record. And what we'll do today is probably show you some of the things uh, that we are building for you to see how these things work together uh, uh, with Freshworks products. So, but just to give you a, a this is a not yet out, this is a, a concept uh, prototype uh, screen, but uh, if you can just uh, imagine a customer record where you know everything about your customer. So the timeline will probably give you uh, everything that the customer has ever done with your business, like uh, what pages did they see on your website, what email campaigns they responded to, uh, what did they do inside your app, who did they talk to, so you can capture all conversations across phone, email, social media, so all the conversations the customers ever had with your business, uh, all the activities that they have done in terms of uh, marketing campaigns, website visits. So just to give you an idea, this is, not, uh, this is something that we are hoping that the master customer record will help us create for you as a business. So think about the power of this. Like, uh, if you are a support person who's actually on a call with a customer, having access to this kind of information where you know uh, which products they are using, how much are they worth to us as a business, um, what, what did they talk about us on social media? The same person who complained on social media is actually talking to me on the phone. And, and by the way, a salesperson is working on a big deal with this customer. All of this will be available with the most key important point is without you having to do any integration, without you having to spend any uh, money with consultants. So that is what uh, we are hoping to accomplish with uh, Freshworks 360. So I would like to now invite uh, David, our CMO, to show you a quick demo of uh, Freshworks 360 in action. So David. Thanks, sir. Oh, <coughs> great, perfect. So. Um, Freshworks 360 actually shipped in July as our first suite of products that's fulfilling this, this vision. Uh, and, and obviously, we're not all the way there yet, as Giddy says, but we're pretty darn close. And so what you're gonna see in this demo that I do is marketing, sales, and support groups working very closely together to wow the customer and sharing the data very easily between those functions. So in this particular example, we've got App Ninja, which is a SaaS company. It's a, it's a cloud company selling like an Evernote 
uh, mini Evernote type of competitor, note-taking app, and you have Joe here who's a prospect for this company. And he comes onto the website, he visits, you'll see what happens, and more importantly uh, for the business is you'll see how easily the marketing people can respond to his needs, okay? Uh, so, so check out this connection, this immediate connection that's gonna happen between the prospect and the marketer. And then of course, the marketer of course, what is marketing's job? Marketing's job is to run around and make things work better uh, for sales. And, and you're gonna see that happen in the demo and you're gonna see sales take over and uh, close the deal as a result of the, uh, the optimization that's done there. And you have your little moment of wow at the end uh, when the customer's amazed at how like, hey, it's like you're reading my mind. Okay, so let's take a look at Freshworks 360 first in marketing and sales, okay? <clears throat> so here's the App Ninja website. Uh, cute little website. You've got a prospect on the website. This is what prospects do. <laughs> it's very exciting. They scroll through the website. Oh my gosh, the prospect is scrolling through the website. And if the prospect is interested, which hopefully you've done a good enough job to do that, they start checking out your product and now, Look at this, pricing. The users on the pricing page, this is a priceless moment for a marketer, and they've selected 100 users. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be amazing. 100 user deal. Oh, but what is he doing now? <gasps> He's looking for discounts. He's looking for a special offer. And he abandons the page. A marketer's worst nightmare, okay? But because I use Fresh Marketer, I'm all over this as a marketer. What you're seeing here is a screen from Fresh Marketer. I have a quick view, quick and easy, simple view of my funnel. And I'm going into my funnel and I'm checking out what's going on with my pricing page. How come my conversions aren't so high? I need to figure out a better way uh, to get more deals, more leads off of this pricing page. And so I'm coming through and I'm seeing the drop off from the standard plan. I'm seeing the conversion rate from the premium plan and it's at 14% and I'm used to like an 18% conversion rate. So what is going on with that? Now, usually marketers will spend a lot of time trying to analyze data and what they sometimes really need to do is get in front of a customer. So how does the marketer get in front of the customer who just abandoned their shopping cart and figure out why? Well, this is one of my favorite features in Fresh Marketer. So what the marketer is gonna do here is use what's called session replay to explore some of the most recent visits onto the pricing page and figure out what's going on. Now look, for, fortunately, here's the replay of the, the visit that we just saw. It's going nice and fast, so I don't have to sit through all of it. I'm getting onto the pricing, I'm seeing, oh my God, there's my, there's my 100 user deal going down the drain. Why is my 100 user deal going down the drain? He wants a discount. He wants a special offer, or she in this case. And so this type of qualitative insight is invaluable to a marketer to marry to the data, okay? So what does the marketer think now? The marketer says, hey, I've got people interested in my 100 user package, but they're not buying because they don't see a discount available. And you know, so marketing 101, why didn't you do that in the first place? Okay, well fix it, okay? Go off and fix it. And one of the great ways to fix that very easily without having to recode the whole website is to add Fresh Chat. How many people use Fresh Chat here? Who's on Fresh Chat? Great. Who's on Fresh Chat for support? Fresh Chat for uh, service? How about sales? Anyone on it for sales? Okay. You're gonna wanna pay attention to this because this is a sales use of Fresh Chat. So the marketer says, I need to give them a discount, I need to do it fast, how do I do that? 
I'm going to engage all of these people when they select the 100 user deal on my site with fresh chat. And I'm going to hand it off immediately to sales. Okay? So here you have it. Check out what Emily in fresh chat is offering. You're asking for 100 users. Here's a 20% offer. And now let's see what happens. The customer takes Emily up on the offer, starts chatting, yes, I'm interested. And I'm going to switch hats here, and I've just switched my hat into sales. Okay? Now I'm the sales rep in Fresh Sales. And you're going to see something really important right here. If salespeople are going to be successful with their CRM, they must live in their CRM. They must work there every day. They should never leave. They should make all of their phone calls. I see a lot of nodding heads. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot. They should make all of their phone calls. They should send all of their emails. They, they shouldn't have to work too hard to record their activities, and you're going to see that in action here. So here is our intrepid sales rep talking to Joe in the chat responding to his interest in the 100 users with a canned response, so it's very, very efficient, right? I see you're interested in, a, in 100 users. I'm ready to roll. What, what more can I help you with? And now let's switch views and look at it from Joe's point of view. Joe is a hot lead. Joe just gave up his phone number, and guess what? Does that sales rep at 5 o'clock in the afternoon have to remember, ooh, I better go back and enter the data of Joe's phone number? No, no, the data just goes right in, okay? So now what you're gonna see is this beautiful experience of taking a conversation with the customer um, who's becoming a lead. This is a, 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 just a, a quick uh, view of our web to lead form. Very easy to use, very easy to set up. Joe's now giving up his email We've got the phone number, we've got the email, we've got the name, we've got the interest in which product he wants to go for, and look at that. Instant, look mom, no integration, lead scoring, okay? I don't know about you, but I've spent more months and years of my life trying to integrate lead scoring with my CRM than I care to admit, okay? And it almost never works. It's almost too expensive. Out of the box, you've got um, some really interesting, uh, intelligent lead uh, scoring going on here. And so what um, Emily, I believe it is, the rep wants to know is, so why is Joe a 99? Like, boy, he's, he's got almost a perfect score. He's at the top of my list. Why is that? OK, well, she's exploring here. Um, it, it's been assigned to her because of her, of her specialty in these uh, larger deals and the geography, et cetera. Now, thanks to the instant integration with socials, we know a lot about Joe. We've got his LinkedIn profile coming in, uh, any Facebook or Twitter data, any Twitter handles that he might have that are related to the email, we can bring that in and correlate that. And of course, we've got his phone number because of the chat. Thank you, Fresh Chat. We've got his phone number. Now, check this out. This is a thing of beauty, truly beautiful. From read from the bottom up, he became a lead four minutes ago. I have a four minute old lead. I am so excited. <laughs> he viewed the web page on, on our notes app. He started using the product. He started creating notes. He started deleting notes. And the, the, the lead was instantly assigned to me. And I'm able to see all of that in real time coming in to fresh sales. So you know what? I think it's probably time for me to get on the horn here with Fresh Caller, which is our integrated um, uh, uh, contact center system inside of fresh sales, and make that call. But again, the important thing here is the data. The data and the work are flowing seamlessly from sales, from marketing, into sales, and the customer's getting a beautiful experience because uh, Emily's right there to help Joe when he needs it. Now, I want to just do one other thing in terms of 360 because Joe loves the app, he's ready to go, 
he's ready to become a customer. And lo and behold, uh, thanks to all of that beautiful sales and marketing that's going on, he gets signed up, he gets into App Ninja, and he starts using it. Okay, now, like any good startup, you can run into problems, you can run into bugs. This is the software industry that we're looking at here in action. And in this case, Joe's using the app, and all of a sudden, he runs into a bug. Error, all he's trying to do is edit a note. Why, why am I getting an error? Like, that's really annoying. You know what? In the old days, I might have picked up the phone and called, or I might have emailed, but guess what? Fresh chat to the rescue again. And I'm just gonna, I just wanna uh, highlight how fresh chat was uh, set up there. Look how, look how, beautiful, uh, how beautifully laid out fresh chat is for both support and other reasons, but in this case, immediate tech support uh, is available to Joe, who's having uh, this, this technical issue with editing notes. And so he comes in and he starts saying, my edit button, is it working? Can you please get my note app back on, on track right away? My productivity is at stake here. And now we're gonna switch and we're gonna take a look at what happens to this chat. Fresh chat, the support rep is using fresh chat here to engage with Joe and to figure out what's going on. She's got full information, the full 360 on Joe right here inside of fresh chat. All of the fresh sales information that came in from that customer journey just flows right into chat. So very importantly, um, what I'm doing as the support rep here is figuring out what level of support do I need to get Joe? Ah, premium, he's already signed up for premium. He's at $4,000 MRR, you know, 4,000 times 12, that's what he's worth to me, right? So I better get on the horn and I better start helping Joe right away. And that doesn't mean, oh, I'll get back to you in three days on how we're gonna fix the bug. It means I gotta get on the horn right now. I need to understand the bug I need to record it into Freshdesk immediately. And before I do that, look at this. Remember we had session replay in Fresh Marketer, where the marketer could learn why did this guy abandon the page? Same principle applies here in Fresh Chat and Freshdesk. At this point, the support rep wants to essentially read Joe's mind and come in and replay what's been going on with Joe. And all of that context, all of that information, all of that, in this case, negative user experience, which needs to be expedited, is coming in and becoming part of the 360 degree view of Joe, okay? So I'm a support rep, I just chatted with him, I just replayed his, rep, uh, his web visit or his app visit in this case. I'm taking all of that information, I'm living in fresh desk, I'm rolling it into a ticket in Freshdesk, and all of the data travels with Joe throughout that journey, from marketing to sales to support. So that's it for Customer 360. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, David. And everything that you saw is actually available today. This is not uh, what we are building. This is all uh, available. So I think, uh, yeah, I know probably some of you are thinking, hey, they're trying to sell us more product, right? That's definitely not the intent here. So we really want to show you the power of how software in a customer context should be working together to help you on the front line as the salesperson or the support person or the marketing person to have better context to be able to really deliver that moment of wow. So that is our whole guiding principle of how we are building this company and that's our product uh, management philosophy. So and that's what we are trying to uh, really bring it to you and I hope uh, you really uh, liked what you saw. Now let's move on. So let's move on to the uh, next topic after Customer 360 is uh, collaboration. 
Let's talk about collaboration uh, for a minute. So how many of you here use uh, Slack or Hangouts uh, for your collaboration, right? So let's talk about, see, Slack is, is a great product for collaboration when you really want to quickly uh, reach out to somebody in your team, and, and it's, it's an always-on collaboration, right? But if you really think about collaboration in a business context, as a support person, as a salesperson, you want to collaborate on something that the customer has asked you, right? That's where the need to collaborate happens. Now, the problem with most of the collaboration today is they've solved the collaboration part very well, but they've missed the context. So if you see the picture here, let's say that this is a typical uh, scenario that uh, probably most of you uh, are going through every day. Like you have your fresh desk. Uh, I'm just using fresh desk as an example. It could be fresh uh, sales or uh, fresh service or any of our products. So let's say a customer has uh, really asked a, a question for which the support person really needs uh, help from another colleague for an answer. Is that a very common everyday scenario where you need to collaborate with one of your colleagues? So what happens here is, like, the, the ticket resides in Freshdesk, and now you're going to this new collaboration tool or, or to this external collaboration tool, and you're asking, hey, Joe, can you help me with this? And then on Hangouts or Slacks, Joe says, sure. Uh, tell me, what do, you, what, what do you need help with? And then you have to start explaining, hey, I have a customer who's doing this, or you have to copy the uh, Freshdesk uh, ticket URL and put it into Hangouts or chat, and then, uh, the, the collaborator, the, the, let's say it's a product manager whom you're collaborating with, so she has to go uh, to Freshdesk, read the ticket, and then understand the customer context, and then come back to Hangouts or chat uh, or Slack, and then actually give you the answer. Is that a common occurrence? In, in This happens every day, probably 1,000 times in our company, right? Because we know that customer support is not only the support team's business. Everybody in the company has to come together in order to support the customer, and often that information or the answer to the customer's problem lies somewhere else. Like if there's a data center issue, you need to talk to the NOC person. If there's a feature that's being asked, you need to talk to the product managers. So that is what uh, we are attempting to really solve with uh, Fresh Connect, which is uh, free for uh, all of our customers. Today, it is integrated with uh, Fresh Desk and Fresh Sales. Uh, it will be integrated into all of our other products. So what Fresh Connect really does is a collaboration tool that gives you full context, right? And I'm going to uh, show you a demo uh, to explain to you how this works. Let's take a, a very common scenario. So this is, uh, again, coming back to App Ninja and Joe. So Joe is actually sending in a support ticket. And uh, Joe is asking, hey, we would like to archive all the old notes, and can you, uh, is there an option to do this? So basically, uh, the support person here is uh, <coughs> Laura. So Joe is actually asking uh, this question, so I can see all the contact details, the requested details. So Laura is the support person. Laura is trying to answer. So she's trying to understand, hey, Joe, we don't have any data storage restrictions, so why don't you really, why do you need archiving? Like, uh, can't you just uh, keep going, right? And then uh, Joe immediately replies, and Laura can quickly see this reply, uh, that there is one new response. And uh, so Joe is explaining why he needs archiving. Uh, so now Laura can't help him anymore, right? Meaning, because as a support person, you need to talk to product to really understand when this feature will come. So she hits the uh, discuss button, and Laura is now going to invite a, a new collaborator. So the most important thing to understand here is a product manager or a, a data center specialist, they need not be an agent in Freshdesk. They are somewhere else in your company. And so Laura is going to invite uh, Mary, in this case, who's a product manager. So she's going to uh, collaborate with uh, Mary. So now instead of uh, going on Hangout or uh, instead of going on Slack. So she's actually saying, hey, Mary, can you help me with this ticket? Now, so since Mary is not on Fresh Connect for the first time, she's getting an email notification saying, hey, Laura is actually, uh, she, she can get notified on Slack or on email, 
that there is a new discussion that Mary uh, Laura is calling you or, or asking you to participate in the discussion. So here what you see is, uh, this is the Fresh Connect interface. So this is for the collaborators in your company who are not on Fresh Desk or Fresh Sales. So they come to a chat interface. So you can see that Laura is actually asking, hey Mary, can you please uh, help me with this uh, ticket? Now look at what's on the right. The entire context of the customer ticket in a read-only view. Like, so Mary cannot make any changes to the ticket, but she can get full context of the ticket, including all the responses that you have sent. So this saves a lot of back and forth time. So the support agent does not have to explain to Mary what the customer is asking. Oh, we have already said that. And, and uh, because Mary is going to say, as a product manager, she's going to say, hey, why do you need archiving, right? Like, uh, tell the customer there's no data limit. So that context. So there's no back and forth. All of that has been avoided. So Mary gets full context. And now she's actually uh, understanding that, oh, this is a archiving feature that's already in the roadmap. She can also read the customer's reply. So she knows that you can't uh, tell them to just uh, not archive. So she's then giving an estimate on when this feature would be released. And when you switch back to Freshdesk, actually, Laura is still living inside Freshdesk. She doesn't have to go to Fresh Connect. That's another important aspect, where the support person is still inside Freshdesk. So Fresh Connect actually uh, has a conversation window inside Freshdesk, whereas the collaborator has their own uh, view, where they can collaborate with multiple people. And what Laura is now doing is uh, sending a reply to Joe with this new information that uh, Mary has given her. So he's copying that and actually sending out a, a reply to the customer that, uh, okay, we are going to have some good news for you. We're going to build this feature in Q4 and, and uh, let me know if you need anything else. So one of the points I wanted to tell you is, yeah, this context object, here it's a ticket, right? So, but it could be a fresh service incident that you're collaborating with other uh, knock engineers. It could be a sales deal that you're working on where a customer is asking for a comparison sheet or a pricing sheet. So the, the context object need not be a ticket. It could be like any context object. So right now we are working on like a fresh test customer support ticket or an incident in the data center or a change that you're uh, planning to work on or uh, it could be a, a marketing campaign that you're working on. So, so it's really powerful in terms of bringing collaboration within the enterprise with the business context of what we are collaborating on. So that is uh, where we think, where Slack and other collaboration tools, while they have solved collaboration well, they have actually missing the context. And we believe for our customers, and again, we, we are not in this to go and compete with uh, uh, Slack. We are not releasing this as a, a product where we are going to sell it independently. This is collaboration for our users in Freshworks. When you're a salesperson or a support person or a marketing person who wants to collaborate with other employees in your, or your colleagues, so we believe that this collaboration with context will make you more productive and will help you collaborate better and give full context uh, to the collaborator. Okay, let's move on to uh, the third aspect of what we're going to talk today, which is probably the hot topic. Everybody uh, thinks about, um, talks about AI is, is everywhere. So. Let's talk about AI in the context of our world, the customer support, customer experience uh, world, and uh, how this is going to uh, change our lives and the future of our work. So what I want to show you is uh, based on our study of what's happening in the field of AI in our world, as well as what is some of the work that we are doing. So I wanted to talk to you about, to share with you some of the uh, exciting areas of where we think change is going to come. So, but let's start with this. Uh, so, in 2016, uh, Mark Andreessen famously said that software is eating the world. Uh, like, how many of you know or, or read that article? Yeah, so if you haven't, I would encourage you to go and read it. So, basically he talked about how software is getting into every industry and, and uh, literally uh, the future is all about uh, software technology, right? But what we believe is we are going from there to AI is eating software, right? So today, every software technology that's out there, 
it's almost like the third wave of uh, software. The first wave was client server. The second wave was probably dumb SaaS. And the third wave is AI first uh, SaaS companies. So, so this is uh, really the, the buzzing topic wherever you go, uh, everywhere people are talking about this or people are like trying to understand what this is. Uh, sometimes people are worried, is, is AI going to like take my jobs away and, and things like that. Have you heard, uh, how many of you actually have started implementing some kind of AI in your company? Okay, so let me show you uh, what we have been doing here. So based on our uh, learning, we actually built a seven step model of uh, how AI applies in, in our world, in the customer support, customer engagement world. So, so I would say at the first layer, when, when we saw the initial work happening, so the first layer of intelligence, as I would like to call it, was in intent detection or sentiment detection, where the machines could look for words or phrases, like in a customer support ticket or a chat or an email, like if, if a customer is saying, hey, um, uh, words like uh, they are frustrated or they want a refund, so you can easily detect, use those phrases to detect that, hey, the customer is wanting uh, their money back or it's a refund related request or it's a very frustrated customer. So that was the first uh, layer of intelligence which uh, many companies started working on in terms of sentiment detection or uh, intent detection, uh, which we call it as uh, uh, the first layer. So the second layer of intelligence, I, for lack of a better term, we call it associative intelligence. So now as customer support agents, right, we, when tickets come in, we read those tickets and then our agents make these association. They say, hey, this is a, uh, an API ticket or this is a high priority ticket or this is an L1 ticket, right? So we classify the tickets based on our understanding. So today it's quite possible for machines to actually go through, like say, uh, vast amounts of data and really understand how humans are reading these texts and actually creating this classification so the machine can actually do the associations automatically. So this is the second layer of intelligence that we call as associative intelligence. So the third layer of intelligence, what we call as responsive intelligence, which is, hey, you're sending me a question via email, via chat. Now I can give you the answer from a knowledge base or from a previous response or from a canned response. So the machines have now learned how to read these blocks of emails or, or uh, read these blocks of text that's coming via email or chat, understand what is the question being asked. Hey, is this an integration with Jira question that's being asked or is it uh, a data archiving question that's being asked? And oh, there is a response in the knowledge base or there is a response that we sent one year ago uh, to a customer. So can I bring that response and actually uh, send it here? So responsive intelligence so machines have, uh, there is enough work that has been done in AI to really get this responsive uh, intelligence. The fourth layer is uh, what I call as rank intelligence, which is uh, sorting objects. Like for example, if there are 20 tickets, how do you determine which ticket uh, should be uh, worked on first? So we all come from a rules-based system where we say, okay, the, if it's a high value customer or it's a high priority ticket, uh, the SLAs, uh, we set SLAs based on different conditions, but all of that can be learnt. So today if you, in, in a business context, for example, if there are 20 leads, the machines can automatically uh, do a scoring on those leads based on your business parameters. For example, uh, I can tell you that in, uh, at Freshworks, if, if somebody is searching for, let's say, uh, a competitor name and alternative, like a Zendesk alternative, and they're coming with a title of, uh, say, customer support manager, so our chances of closing are much higher, right? So, so for example, so when you see patterns like that, so the machines can automatically score leads based on, I just gave you two examples, but there are hundreds of parameters that can go in right from search terms to job titles to location of the uh, company, uh, whether it's US or uh, say uh, Philippines, could be very different in terms of the lead score. Uh, so all of this is learned dynamically based on your data. So historically based on your company, you know which customers convert better. So all of that the machines can learn. So, so the ability to rank 20 tickets to say which ones are more important or 
rank 20 leads to say which uh, uh, lead has a better chance of closure or rank 20 candidates if you're hiring somebody and say which candidate you should be interviewing first. So all of that is already available in terms of technology being available. So that is what we call as rank intelligence. And the fifth layer of uh, intelligence where till now we've been working on like emails or uh, blocks of text. So the fifth layer is working on data. So can the machine interpret data, like huge amounts of past data, and then forecast and tell you, like can it uh, really tell you, okay, you're not going to hit your uh, revenue targets this month, or you're going to be short staffed for next week for the holidays because there's going to be a huge influx of new tickets and you're not staffed uh, appropriately. So now, these five steps, I would actually say, are already available as technology, and uh, there has got a lot of uh, implication in terms of usage in our products. This, the sixth and seventh layers of intelligence are where I think it's very profound and insightful where it, it uh, kind of blew my mind away. And I would say the sixth one is why companies like us should be worried, right? So. <laughs> So what I, this is what I call as uh, workflow intelligence. So today, if you look at fresh desk or fresh service of most of the, any enterprise product, not only us, most of the enterprise software that's out there today, we all work on rules-based systems, right? We have dispatcher rules, supervisor rules, observer rules, and so on. The reality is all of these rules can actually be learned by the machines, and it can be improved over time, and, main, and, and it can get very complex than what humans can handle. So, for example, one of our dispatcher rules, we may say, if the subject or description contains paper jam or cannot print, then this is a printer uh, support ticket, assign it to the printer support group, right? This is a printer uh, ticket, go to assign it to printer support group. But the machine can actually go beyond that. It can pick up 150 different variations of how people actually report printer issues, and actually build a model which will say, if any of this happens, automatically assign it to printer support. You can probably never create a rule like that ourselves, right? So this is something that, as a provider of enterprise software, we need to be rethinking, how can we do AI-first design, right? And not just as everybody, so the companies that don't get it are actually going to be uh, the companies of the past generation. So this is coming, this is uh, new. And as I told you, this is why companies like us should be worried. And the seventh one is why you should be worried. <laughs> so basically, um, I call the seventh layer of intelligence as process intelligence. So if you really think about what process intelligence means, so the machine can understand data and actually present actionable insight. Now this is what we used to have managers for, right? A, a lot of times, if you think about, uh, let's take a customer support manager, right? What does a customer support manager do? Well, like, there are many things that you do, but some of the things that a customer support manager does at the end of the month or end of the quarter, you do an L1 ticket analysis. You see uh, how many, like what percentage of our support is L1, and, and maybe 38% of our tickets are actually these five frequently asked questions. So the input to business is, hey, can we, uh, like, create some videos or self-service to make these uh, five tickets go away, right? Or if there are L3 tickets, like bugs. So you go to engineering and say, hey, 27% of our support tickets were caused by these five bugs. Go and fix this. Do we do this as customer support managers? <clears throat> yes or no? So, so what I'm saying is in order to get that report, we have our agents who are manually marking all these tickets who are feeding in the data because the managers need the reports. So today, all of that is actually, it's possible to really uh, provide that insight automatically without humans having to fill the data. So the machine, with the associative intelligence, the machine can automatically categorize the tickets, and with the data intelligence, it can automatically say, like at least, say 40, 50% or more of the regular insights which are not new insights, is actually going to be done by the machine. So this is something that people are really uh, working on in terms of 
some, some of the things that could change the way we work. So you have to think deeply about it. The, our organizations, sometimes if you, if you outsource level one support, right? So most of that is going to be automated. So now, I'm not trying to scare you here. I'm, we are all in this. No. <laughs> so, no, don't worry. So, basically, a lot of times, we all have felt like robots in our work. Our approach to AI is to remove that robots from you and make work more interesting and more fun. So that's why we would like to announce uh, Freddy, Freddy the Omnibot, which is... So, so today we are announcing Freddy, which is our AI engine. Uh, we're calling it Freddy the Omnibot, uh, which we believe is a human's best friend. That's why we chose uh, a, a nice, cute uh, dog for this. And I'm going to quickly tell you uh, what Freddy can do and help you with. And uh, <clears throat> so basically, uh, the, the approach that we have taken is how can Freddy help you? So first is. Freddy can help your customers from an end user self-service point of view. So Freddy can talk to customers and actually uh, help them get consistent answers quickly on and accurate answers. So one of the most important aspects of uh, Freddy is, and, and this is what we have taken care of, is because we know that in customer support or in customer engagement, you don't want to hand over your customers to the bots, right? You, uh, Freddy will engage only when he knows that they're like 100% confident that they can resolve the issue. But if Freddy knows that he can't resolve the issue, he will connect to a live person. And this is something that we are building it uh, in a very unique way. We are not coming and telling you that, like hand over uh, your support to the bots and, and let customer experience uh, go for the uh, toss. So we really know that no company would want to do that. We all want some level of automation so that the frequently asked questions, the, the monotonous repeated questions, uh, we don't have to waste time uh, by saying the same answers again and again. So Freddie will take care of that. But when at the moment Freddie knows that he can't uh, handle it, it uh, he will connect to a live agent. So Freddie helps your agents. So one of the things that we have built with Freddie is whether you're a salesperson or a marketing person or a support uh, person, so Freddie uh, we'll have, uh, we'll show you some uh, really exciting uh, use cases that we have built with for some of our customers. So it's already uh, live, and we'll show you how uh, Freddy can actually assist agents in responding to customers in real time. And Freddy can help your managers by giving them uh, insights that they need in terms of uh, uh, all the data. By processing all the data, Freddy can actually tell the managers, hey, this is what you should be focusing on. So just to give you a quick uh, uh, walkthrough of how it looks like. So when you see Freddie helping customers with self-service, so we already had this, uh, uh, there are, this is live with uh, several customers already. So, so Freddie can try to engage with uh, customers, understand what is the question they are asking, and uh, through a chat, a fresh chat uh, chatbot, or Freddie can also reply to emails automatically. When customers 
send an email if Freddie knows that this is a standard question and we already have knowledge base articles. So Freddie can send an email as a first level of response, but give the customer an option to say, yes, this helped. If the customer says no, then it can go into uh, support. So Freddie can graciously hand over uh, to a human agent at any point of time. So when, when Freddie is trying to uh, chat with the customer and if the customer is asking something that Freddie doesn't know, so Freddie will actually say, hey, uh, let me get someone from the team to kind of help you. So, and because we have live chat and uh, a fresh desk, Freddie can either connect to a live chat person or Freddie can create a ticket in fresh desk for you to continue the conversation. So Freddie can help your agents, and this is really powerful. A lot of times we have seen our customers actually spend a lot of time and money onboarding new agents, right? Training the agents to come up to speed. So what we built, uh, and, and David will probably show you a demo of this, is when, when you are on the call with the customer, like when you're uh, talking to a customer, like Freddie can suggest which questions to ask, and based on the customer responses, so Freddie can surface the next level of questions so that it's almost like the agent is getting trained by Freddie to really speak or ask the right questions, and uh, especially in complex workflows or flowcharts where you have to really uh, learn everything before you can go live on the floor, so that uh, process can be uh, uh, made faster. You can also see that, uh, so what you're seeing here is on the middle, you see the agent assist screen. On the right, uh, you also see Freddie can bring similar tickets or uh, suggested solution articles also. So everything to help an agent uh, quickly respond to this customer. Or it, uh, Freddie can suggest canned responses that are in the system. <clears throat> so from a sales rep standpoint, so Freddie can do uh, lead scoring based on your data. Like if, if you have, like say, thousands of customers, and Freddie can learn from all the activities that those customers did to figure out patterns on which customers actually uh, are the best, so how did they become customers, what activities they perform, can backtrack and figure out that somebody new is coming in as a lead, if they do these things, they have a higher chance of converting as a customer. And, and this is uh, Freddie helping managers forecast, uh, this is like a sales pipeline, where it's probably the end of the quarter and uh, the sales manager is really doing a pipeline review to see which deals are going to close. And uh, so Freddie can automatically highlight uh, each deal with the win probabilities and actually show that, hey, these are your best deals that you have to go and work on uh, now. So, and Freddie goes everywhere. Like, so, and David will probably show you a, a, a demo of Freddie in sales. Freddie the Omnibot. Okay, so we've got a different company this time, not App Ninja. This time it's Convertum. Another email marketing company uh, in this case. And so again, what, what you're seeing here is typical customer engagement uh, on a website um, that's fresh, fresh chat enabled. And the difference here is in the earlier demo, we saw fresh chat uh, being used by an agent immediately to engage with the customer. And what you're going to see here, sorry for all the glitches on the video here, is the, the customer coming in and saying, hey, I have a question about Convertum. Can you help? Now, this is Freddie. This is Freddie responding in a sales context, asking for the name, the email, in order to get going. And by the way, look how Freddie's already figured out uh, Jane's name from her email, and of course, the email is going to get fed into the CRS, CRM system. Uh, now the customer is asking a question about, do you have compatibility and integration with Facebook? OK, yes, uh, we do. And uh, which plan is it on uh, is another uh, obvious question that the customer might ask. And here is the information about the Facebook integration um, that's actually being drawn uh, from the Freshdesk knowledge base. Okay, so you've got sales and support working together in the background uh, to get the right information at the right time automatically to your prospect, bringing that, that information in. And so that's, that's a, a thing of beauty uh, in and of itself. 
but the customer is still uh, got some more questions, interested in the enterprise plan, and wants a support in SLA. Now at that point, support in SLA is a very high level of interest, and this is where Freddie knows to hand it off to a human, okay? So at, at this point, uh, Jane is coming in as a lead inside of Fresh Sales, uh, and uh, Emily, I believe it is, the sales rep is picking it up, and, and so uh, we've got a nice, uh, quick, canned response that comes in. Um, there's, there's real engagement going on between uh, the, the sales rep and the, uh, 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 the prospect at that point, okay? Now, I'm just gonna pause for a second to switch. So, so I, want, I just wanted to underscore what happened there. You had Freddie take care of kind of the drudgery work, like who is this person? What is she interested in? And answering a very basic question, but it, when it came to a more technical question and also a more qualifying question, you can always balance those two in your, in your workflows, Freddie handed it off to a human being. And that's a great customer experience. I think that's the thing to really focus on is how to deploy Freddie for a great customer experience. Now, the other thing Gadish mentioned is Freddie is good for your employees too. A, good for your customers to give them a better experience, and B, good for your employees. So here is an example of Freddie helping the same rep get to her number, okay? What's your job as a rep? Get to your number, and notice the insight that just popped up uh, in my notifications here. I've got four days left in the month, and I need $132,000 to achieve my target. So, Freddie, tell me about my deals. And here it is. Look, I don't think anyone's ever seen a view of their deal pipeline quite like this. Obviously, you've got stages, that's standard stuff, but look at the red, yellow, and green. So, first of all, each of these deals is ranked by probability of close, okay? Obviously, red, not so probable, green, much more probable, and that's honestly what a sales rep has to calculate in her head every day. What are the deals that I'm likely to close versus not, and let me prioritize my time accordingly. And so look at, look at this very convenient thing that Freddie throws up on the screen for her. Win probability, the amount of money in each of those categories, the number of deals, and the sales target and progress to date. But the real gold is down at the bottom. You've got nine deals that can help you get to your 132K. Freddie's pretty good at math for a dog. <laughs> and, and so guess what? Show me those deals. These are the deals that are gonna get the sales rep to her number. And not only does she immediately see the ranked prioritization of those deals, but she can go in and see why. Like, okay, Freddie, you're a cute little dog, but I don't necessarily trust you yet. Come and tell me why I should believe you, okay? So look, look at what Freddie's saying here. High win rate probability, but why? Oh, she's responding to your emails and chats. Your outgoing calls to her are being answered. She visited the pricing page just recently, and she's actually asked, uh, she's called support. She's got tickets in the system. I've got tickets in the system from this prospect? That is a very positive sign that I'm about to have a good quarter, okay? So this is the beauty of, of Freddie at work here. And so obviously, the next thing I need to know is, well, how do I get Jean? How do I win her? So you notice what she clicked on there was next task. Freddie, tell me what to do next. And that's exactly what Freddie's doing here is, hey, it's time for you to send an email. I suggest that, I, I think this is uh, the email uh, of the quote. Hey, it's time for a quote, you know? You're that far along with Jane, you better send her a quote. And remind yourself to follow up with her in a couple of days. That would be a really, really good idea. So uh, I, I think we should give it up for Freddie inside of Fresh Sales because that is pretty phenomenal. Last, last thing here, um, 
Freddy's a very sensitive bot. He's, you know, just like your favorite pet, he can read your moods. And in this case, he's reading the mood of the customer. Look at that little green happy face right there. And what does he say? Oh, hey, Frank, this works for us. Deal. Okay, that, that quote uh, with Jane really worked. All right, so let's go from sales uh, to support, okay? I'm gonna show you a couple of classic, really simple, but you know, sometimes the simplest things are the most powerful things. This is a classic example of um, Freddie at work in support, okay? So here's my ticket in support. I've got a DTH connection uh, issue with a set-top box in this case, okay? I need to respond to that email. What should my response be? For new reps in particular, this is invaluable. I got to send an email. I'm not quite sure what to say, but look how Freddie's suggesting what I should say at the bottom of the screen. And that's exactly what goes to work here. Very simply, very easily, you just click on the connectivity issue. That suggested content immediately uh, converts into an email that's sent out, and before you know it, you have a, a very happy um, and wowed customer by how quickly even a relatively inexperienced rep, uh, agent in this case, can go to work. Now, if you're a manager, the volume of emails can really pile up pretty quickly. So Freddie works for you too. So in this case, what you're seeing with that first ticket at the top uh, from Thomas Matthew is Freddie didn't wait for you to write the email. Freddie just sent the email, okay? And so what you'll see here is a view on, on that uh, pre-populated email. I suggested the following articles to Thomas. These are the articles I sent. Of course, all of that's saved in the 360 degree view um, of the customer. And so Thomas now gets a, a nice suggestion from Freddie. And of course, th this is gonna be ranked along the way in terms of effectiveness, and the algorithm will automatically adjust. Here you see he's actually clicking on the article that was suggested in the email. And now this is a bit of a <laughs> internally focused uh, button here. But uh, yes, I like this article. Please close the ticket, all right? You wouldn't want to do that for your customers, but it's for your benefit. You can see that at this point, the customer who's taking um, the suggested article's advice and benefiting from that is, is telling you that uh, their issue is resolved. Okay. Now, I want to show you uh, my favorite uh, support video. And what this is, is this is our agent assist. Okay, and this will uh, tee up the video, uh, Shri. Uh, but before we show the video, let me just tell you what you're gonna see. Um, so some of our most forward-thinking customers uh, like Sling Media uh, have already uh, uh, deployed Agent Assist. And the way I like to think about this is I, I call it the television news anchor man producer effect, right? So, you know, all of these television anchors you know, have their wire going into their ear and their producers basically telling them what to say, okay? <clears throat> That's Freddie in this scenario. Take a look at this phone call that goes down uh, with a customer, an agent, and Freddie all working together. Can we cue up that video? So here you have Kavya, the agent, getting ready to hop on a call uh, with an incoming support ticket. Hi, Joe. Thank you for calling Netway Support. How can I help you today? Hi, my internet's not been working for some time now. Can you help me with that? Yeah, sure. Uh, just a minute. That was supposed to be a figurative minute, not an actual minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, can you please confirm if the Wi-Fi router is plugged in and switched on? Yeah, it's that I checked. All, all right. Can you also confirm the model of the Wi-Fi router? It would be on the side of the router. Just give me a moment. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's BTX101. All right. Can you also let me know if the third LED from the left is on 
and also help me with the color uh, it's on and it's orange in color all right can you please let me know if the yellow lan cable is securely connected to the back of the router oh it's uh, slightly loose yeah uh, would it be possible for you to connect it firmly and then restart the router i just plugged it back firmly this time and i've restarted the all right i'll wait for you to confirm how it works yeah internet is back now thank awesome. you so much awesome is there anything else i can help you with no that will be all thank all you all right you have a great day joe freddy deserves a round of applause he's so cute you, you throw him a bone you throw him a bone he brings he brings the bone back that 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 is uh, truly awesome are we are we back here um, okay, I think we've got a couple more examples uh, of Freddy at work, and uh, this is uh, really, really exciting. We did our, our sales demo, our support demo. Now, IoT, it's hot, especially for you, you fresh service folks, you know, deep in uh, the uh, details of your network and your operations, um, especially when it comes to dealing with the edge of that network, it can be a little bit challenging. So I'm really excited to share this Fresh Service Freddy demo with you. And I want to welcome to the stage uh, one of our marketplace partners. And so Manish, are you here in the audience somewhere? Yes. Great. Come on up, please. I want to introduce, let's have a round of applause for Manish Kanchan. <laughs> Manish? Please, please meet Garish as well, our hey, CEO. Manish, Manish uh, is the head of engineering for small uh, core business products at Pitney Bowes. How many are Pitney Bowes customers out there? Okay, great. And <clears throat> so we have, uh, I think this is our first ever uh, hardware release <laughs> uh, here uh, at Freshworks. So Manish, can we walk over to your baby here? Let's, let's take a look at what we got going on here. Thanks again for joining us. So uh, tell us a little bit about this puppy. Sure. Uh, oh. Thanks, David. Thanks, Girish. So uh, you know, a couple of thoughts uh, before I go on to this baby. Uh, so Pitney Bowes uh, is a 100-year-old startup. <laughs> and it's uh, reinventing itself. Uh, it's probably uh, simplifying your mailing and shipping solutions. Uh, into spaces like addressing, mailing, shipping, commerce services, and it's like 3.4 annual billion uh, revenues that you have for the year. Uh, and uh, so one of the other things that I would like to highlight is that last year, we launched our uh, C-series device, which is our all-in-one sending uh, device, and we launched right here in New York City at the Google headquarters. And uh, this is truly transformational in the sense that how we are, uh, this device is connected to make the experience for your clients more digital and connected all the time. So um, this runs Android. Uh, with it comes uh, the power of uh, the Android ecosystem and uh, so, you know, yeah, while well, uh, David is showing this, a couple of more thoughts uh, on this machine. So last year, when we launched uh, this machine at Google headquarters right here, uh, we then had a hackathon, and uh, we then partnered with startups and partners. There were a lot of ideas that came around uh, the whole shipping flow in terms of what we do for pre-shipping and uh, post-shipping uh, things that we had. A lot of uh, ideas and uh, applications were shortlisted and they were productized, including from Freshworks, which I'll talk in a moment. Uh, so, you know, these applications, happy to announce you that this machine right now is uh, rolled out to more than 60,000 clients. And for Pitney Bowes, we have 750K small and medium businesses who are our clients. That's an enormous figure. And imagine Android is running on all of those devices. And while we speak, more than 16,000 such devices have all these applications which have gone there. So, you know, I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, let's say you are a small online uh, retailer. 
and you want to ship something um, at a low price in a very short time. So you have an application called Same Day Delivery, which helps you right then and there. Uh, so let Manish, me Manish, can I ask you a question? So, so this, this uh, printer is dedicated to a, a label printout? Is that, that Correct. what it is? Correct. So if I've got a, a, a shipping operation, I need to ship stuff, whether I'm small or big, in a rapid way, I might, I might be interested in this. Correct, correct. So you know, David is right. So you have a scale which is inbuilt in the machine. And uh, you, know, you have an Android 7-inch screen, uh, which has all the capabilities of Android. So you can print your label right here. And you know, this has multi-carrier uh, compatibility with USPS, FedEx, and UPS. So you, it's an all-in-one solution right there. So, so Manish, what, what drove your interest in partnering with Freshworks? OK. So uh, let me talk about Freshworks now. Uh, so Freshworks, early this year, uh, Girish, we had uh, at PayPal headquarters in the Bay Area, uh, we had a SMB hackathon. And uh, Freshworks was our technology partner there. And uh, with it, uh, when we were talking about is all these applications, one thing clearly came out that uh, we needed a very strong partner for uh, getting our client services and uh, you know their Freshworks came in. So we have actually a Freshworks app that's sitting on the machine that has gone out to 16,000 clients in the field, will be eventually rolled out to all the 60,000 machines. And this app provides you everything in terms of the ticket management and everything else other. And uh, coming on to something that uh, you know, David has been talking about uh, it for some time now on the stage is about the chatbot platform. So this is refreshing to you know, share with you that the chatbot platform is integrated into our one of the most important applications, which we called as Centro Care app. Now, this app is having machine learning, uh, analytics, IoT. And this proactively kind of uh, you know, uh, tells that is the machine having an issue. For example, have you a paper loss and you have Wi-Fi connectivity? So it's like a very, very essential app. Now the chatbot platform, Freddy, that Adam was, uh, David was talking about, that kind of integrates very, very deeply into it. And you know, th there's a demo that uh, yeah. David can yeah. walk us through. Actually, uh, I, I've got a, a little movie to share with you here, Manish. We, we uh, just recorded this earlier. And so uh, there's a reason we call Freddy an Omnibot, because he goes everywhere, uh, including dutifully uh, out, out to your favorite uh, Pitney Bowes printer. So what you're going to see here is Freddy helping a customer, a user, who's, uh, you know, look, even the best printer has printer jams, OK? And even the best printer needs support. And let, let's see how this support looks uh, from a Freddy user's point of view. So here's the Send Pro Care app. It's literally an app running on the, uh, the Android uh, instance on the printer. And you can see, ooh, Paper Jam's been alerted thanks to the combined efforts of uh, Pitney Bowes and, and Freddie here alerting the, uh, th the user to the issue. Click for help, and it's Freddie to the rescue. Freddie the Omnibot is right here uh, at the printer communicating not only with the printer itself, receiving all of that information about what's going on, but now pulling information from fresh service, OK? So think about how powerful that is. Your fresh service knowledge base, including a video of how to un unstick the printer, uh, is being pulled from fresh service out to the printer itself, OK? Talk about self-service. I, I, I love that. I have to applaud for that myself, <laughs> OK? Uh, talk, talk about ticket deflection. Now, of course, the user can say, that didn't fix the problem. And so now, a ticket from the printer is automatically instantiated in fresh service. And you can see all of the information about the printer is right there on the right. All of that, that previous history uh, is happening. Now, now, what's really interesting, <laughs> you know, we all talk about marketplaces. We all talk about the fact that we've got apps um, that, that enhance our applications. This blew my mind. There's actually a marketplace for this printer, <laughs> OK? And so you can download apps onto the printer, and Freddy's there to help with whatever kind of app uh, you may have downloaded, including this same-day delivery app that Manish mentioned, yeah. earlier, mentioned earlier. And what that means is, hey, 
I'm printing the labels, I need to know what the status uh, of my shipments is, and I can do that with Freddy. So Freddy has now come up, and I, I'm asking him a question about tracking, and how do I track uh, my, my shipments in, in Freddy, and it's all right here in Freddy the Omnibot. So congratulations, Manish. Thank Thanks. you so much. Thank really you, appreciate David. it. Okay, and we're on Thanks, to our Manish. last big announcement here. Um, no. That's a, a, a thing thank you. of beauty. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to have Freshworks as a key partner in our marketplace. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Great. Thank, thank you so much. Really thank appreciate you. it. So, before we uh, show you the last uh, demo, I uh, want to quickly uh, tell you that, uh, as David mentioned earlier, so we've been working closely with Google, and uh, uh, Google is an investor in our company, and uh, so the Google has been doing some phenomenal work in AI and ML in terms of uh, uh, bringing the Google Assistant. And now they're also working on bringing the same uh, Google Assistant, uh, the AI ML technology to the businesses. So you have probably some of you saw Sundar Pichai's uh, demo uh, about uh, how uh, th uh, there was an AI bot calling to make a reservation. Uh, so. What we have done is uh, partnered with Google in terms of bringing their uh, dialogue flow, um, as well as the AI for contact center, Google AI for contact center. So we are very excited to announce this partnership uh, with Google that uh, we are announcing it today. And uh, David will uh, show you a demo which showcases uh, the result of that uh, partnership of how we could see this uh, coming to you in the future, like uh, when it gets rolled out. Thank you, Girish. Let's, let's go ahead and switch the monitor to the back. Uh, before we run uh, this demo, uh, I, I just want to say a couple of things. Uh, I'm so excited about this, this Google partnership, and I have to say it, it's kind of personal. I'm an iPhone user, and whenever I go and, and uh, drive around with Girish and I watch him using his Google Pixel, I frankly start getting a little jealous because he spends a lot of time talking to his phone and he's not making phone calls. He's getting stuff back from Google uh, on the phone. And it's just a testament to how far ahead of the pack uh, Google's algorithms are that, that that conversation is happening. And I'm sitting here going like, Siri, Siri, hello, can you please talk to me? You know, Siri, whatever. OK, so, so, so the point here is that this conversational AI is getting very advanced. It's not only affecting our personal lives. As you're seeing here, it's going to affect our, our business life uh, very, very intensely. And so it, it's super exciting. This is a prototype uh, of fresh, uh, fresh Desk working with uh, Google AI. And I want to make sure you get back here tomorrow morning uh, for the keynote by Adam Champy. Uh, Adam Champy is the, the head of Google AI uh, contact center uh, efforts at Google. He's going to be giving uh, a keynote tomorrow about Google's vision uh, for AI. I think you'll really enjoy it. Now, the reason I found Adam to be fascinating is before he took this job, he was the product manager for these Beat-like headphones that, that uh, Google had uh, produced that you would put on, and someone could speak to you in you know whatever language, Chinese, Hungarian, whatever, and you would hear it in English or whatever your target language was. So it's, that is the power uh, of the Google AI stack, which we're leveraging here. And so what you're going to see is a classic customer support uh, use case, uh, a, a laptop uh, reseller, Acme laptop, that's made their support capability available through Google Assistant. And again, you're going to see Freddie making really intelligent choices here between when do I try to help as a bot versus bring in a human. Can we roll tape, please? Talk to Acme support. Okay, let's get the test version of Acme support. Welcome to know you better. I just need to get your name from Google. Is that okay? Yes. Hello, Ajit. How can I help you today? My laptop is crashing. I see you have a Model X3 Windows 10 laptop. Is that right? Yes. 
Can you tell us more about the problem? Every time I launch PowerPoint, my laptop crashes. I have noticed this recent article which says you should install the 10.2 patch to your Windows 10 laptop. Have you done that? No. Would you like to install it now? Yes, please. I have sent an email with detailed instructions. Please open it on your laptop and follow along. Would you still like to talk to a live agent? Yes. So the, the reason for that slight pause there was actually a networking issue. But All what's right. Also Let going, me what's also going on in the background? Oh, go ahead. We can give it up for Freddie at that point. Um, what's, what's going on in the background there that doesn't get captured is Freddie is uh, through our integration with Fresh Caller, which is our, our contact center um, application, is connecting uh, uh, Ajit here, the very annoyed uh, consumer whose laptop is crashing, to a live agent. But the really cool thing is, before that connection is made, the live agent gets a call from Freddie, powered by Google, and that entire history is narrated to him by Freddie b before the call is connected. So he's fully up to speed and is not redundantly asking uh, other questions. So that, in a nutshell, uh, is the future of, of AI and customer engagement, thanks to Freshworks and Google. And I'll hand it over to Girish to take us to break. Yeah, so I think uh, that uh, brings us to the end of uh, Freddie. I just want to leave you with uh, uh, a closing thought of all the three things that we saw today. So the whole idea was to give you a sneak peek into where we believe the future of customer engagement is going. So uh, the customer 360 uh, journey is going to happen uh, sooner than uh, ever before. So we believe that uh, companies will start demanding a full 360 degree context. Uh, and you can expect the industry to move in that direction. That is our prediction. Uh, from a, a collaboration standpoint, we really believe that uh, while collaboration has been solved, context has been lost. And we really think, in, at least in our world, in the customer engagement world, collaboration with context is uh, probably the need of the hour. And uh, finally, uh, AI is here. AI is real. The technology is mind-boggling. Uh, what you can do with it. And, and I feel, I truly believe that it's uh, going to make our lives much better. So we will be, uh, work will become interesting and uh, we'll be able to focus on doing new things and, and things that we love rather than uh, being the monotonous robots that sometimes we feel that our jobs uh, make us to be. So, so with that, I would, uh, uh, let's have a short break and uh, thank you.